There are a couple of theories about how and why schizophrenia develops. And the first has to do with abnormal brain activity. Specifically, when they've done fMRIs and PET scans of individuals with schizophrenia, they found that there is a decrease in activity in the frontal lobes, which are the areas of the brain that are associated with things like reasoning and problem solving. They've also found increased activity in the thalamus, which is sort of the sensory way station of the brain. Studies have also found that there's increased activity in the amygdala, which is the part of the brain that's associated with things like the fear response. Other studies of abnormal brain activity in schizophrenia talk about what's called the dopamine hypothesis. And these theories talk about the increase of a specific receptor, the, the, the D4 receptor. It seems that this particular receptor for dopamine might be hypersensitive in individuals with schizophrenia. And it's believed that this might be related to symptoms involving hallucinations. And there's been a bunch of evidence for this. We know that drugs that block these receptors tend to lessen hallucinations, while drugs that increase dopamine levels, things like amphetamines, can serve to increase hallucinations. Aside from looking at abnormal brain activity, we can also look at abnormal brain anatomy, or areas of the brain that are different in individuals with schizophrenia as compared to other individuals. Structural scans of the brains of individuals with schizophrenia have shown that these individuals have enlarged ventricles. And these are the areas or the, or the spaces in the middle of your brain that are filled with cerebral spinal fluid. Studies have also shown that there's a decrease in tissue in a number of brain areas. And these include things like the corpus callosum, which connects the two hemispheres of the brain. And also a decrease in size of the thalamus. And I find this to be particularly interesting because it means that individuals with schizophrenia have both decreased thalmatic tissue as well as increased thalmatic activity. And I think it's interesting to think about how a combination of those things might be related to hallucinations, especially considering what the thalamus does, which is relay information from our sense organs to the parts of our brain that interpret that information. I think the most important thing to note here though is that it's not just one isolated brain area that's responsible for schizophrenia. It's really a, a jumble of abnormal anatomy and activity that lead to the symptoms that we associate with this disorder. Another thing that we, of course, have to talk about in terms of the causes of schizophrenia are our genetic factors. And we actually know that schizophrenia has a very strong genetic component. For example, normally someone's chances of developing schizophrenia are about 1 in 100. But when someone has a sibling or a parent with the disorder, those chances increase dramatically. Specifically, when it's a sibling or a parent, the chances become 1 in 10. And this makes sense. If, if schizophrenia is genetically driven, then you would assume that if a parent or a sibling had it, that it would increase the chances of you having it as well since you share genetic material. And this is further supported by the evidence gained from studies with identical twins. Which have found that if one twin has the disorder, the other twin has a 1 in 2 chance of having it as well. And this is true even when the twins are separated and raised by different families. But just because we know that there's a genetic component doesn't mean that it's easy to identify that component. As you might suspect, there isn't a single gene that codes for schizophrenia. Instead, like basically everything else, it's influenced by the effects and interactions of many genes. But even though we know that genes have a huge effect on schizophrenia, that doesn't mean that environment doesn't have anything to do with it. because it definitely does, but it does in the sense that the environment can determine whether or not a gene is expressed. And we refer to this as epigenetics. And so while we can pretty much say for sure that there is no one environment that can cause someone to develop schizophrenia, we do know that things like nutrition or viral infections or toxins can all influence whether or not the genes carried by individuals are turned on or turned off. So someone might have a lot of the genetic markers that we might associate with someone having schizophrenia, but unless they're exposed to some kind of environmental trigger, which we haven't really identified, they might not develop the disorder at all. 
And the opposite is also true. If someone has a genetic predisposition for schizophrenia and they're placed in some kind of environment that serves as a trigger, this could increase the likelihood that they develop the disorder later in life. And when we talk about environments, a lot of the environments that we're talking about are prenatal environments, meaning the environment that a fetus develops in. And there are a lot of things that scientists suspect can lead to the disorder. So some people have theorized that maternal diabetes can increase the likelihood that someone develops schizophrenia. Also, things like older parental age. But there are also environments that, that are postnatal environments. Specifically, in this case, we're going to be talking about environments that exist right after a child is born. And this includes things like low birth weight. And also possibly oxygen deprivation during delivery. And so different research done in different labs have shown that each of these things may act as an environmental trigger, somehow serving to activate the genes that might give rise to schizophrenia. And there's one additional environmental trigger that I want to talk about, and that's talking about viral infections. But when I talk about this, I'm not talking about infections that, that a fetus or a child gets. Instead, I'm talking about infections that a woman gets while she is pregnant. There's been a lot of really interesting research that shows that schizophrenia might be triggered by the flu. In particular, they have found an increase in schizophrenia in the children of women who had the flu while they were pregnant. And there's actually been a lot of converging evidence that points to this being a very important environmental trigger, perhaps not the only one, but one that might be important nevertheless. And I think that this actually has some really interesting public health implications. Specifically, this might make it even more important for women to get a flu shot while they are pregnant. And also for women to try to make sure that the people around them are vaccinated as well.